truth becomes clearer when we simply look at our current banking system. According to a report entitled The Federal Reserve Directors, a study of corporate banking influence conducted by the Committee on Banking, Currency and Housing, House of Representatives, in August 1976, it was concluded that all major financial banking cartels of the United States are all subsidiaries of the London Bank of England. In other words, the Neiman Rothschild Bank owns every major bank in the United States. This list includes Lehman Brothers and Morgan Stanley, recently dissolved from the created economic crisis, National City Bank, Chase Manhattan, and many others. Every time a taxpayer pays a tax, they are transferring their labor to the Queen of England and her heirs. Who are her heirs, you may be asking? All of your presidents and high office officials who are related to the aristocracy by blood. These officials are more commonly known as esquires. An esquire is defined as a man belonging to the higher order of English gentry, ranking immediately below a knight. To represent the crown, esquires or attorneys were used to handle the legal process of infiltrating the Americas. These esquires maintained positions of power, thus continuing control through British Admiralty law. Most of us have heard of Benjamin Franklin and John Adams and their early contributions to the United States, but what you may not have heard is that Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, and John Jay were all esquires to the crown. They negotiated the Paris Peace Treaty of 1783 on behalf of the United States. It becomes clearer now why the treaty seems to align in favor of the British even though they supposedly lost the war. The Paris Peace Treaty did not give America title to land. The King's possessions in America were protected and governed by corporate charters. Benjamin Franklin visited England and France many times during the Revolutionary War. Again, the British just moved from overt control of the 13 colonies to covert control. After the Civil War, the United States was financially weakened. Low on resources and still struggling to put the country back together, America needed money. The international bankers were right there to lend us all that we needed. In 1871, Congress cut a deal with the Rothschild bankers to incur a debt, which would allow the establishment of a new government controlled by foreign money interest. Under the Legislative Act of February 21, 1871, the United States government incorporated as a commercial enterprise to do business for profit. What that means is that the United States of America changed from a country into a corporation. What you must understand is that this changed the entire process of how our government works and its overall objective as an enterprise. This Legislative Act of 1871 designated the District of Columbia under a separate form of government with separate jurisdiction from the rest of the Union States with the United States of America, now incorporated as a commercial enterprise. The country could borrow huge sums of money from the international bankers. The debt would eventually get so high that by 1933, just 62 years later, the United States would have to file for Chapter 11. Because of the Legislative Act of February 21, 1871, Washington, D.C., is not a state, but a jurisdiction called the District of Columbia. The evidence for this fact can be found in the 41st Congress, Session 3, Chapter 62, 1871, when they state, an act to provide a government for the District of Columbia, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States and Congress assembled, that all that part of the territory of the United States included within the limits of the District of Columbia be, and the same is hereby created into a government by the name of the District of Columbia, by which name is hereby constituted a body corporate for municipal purposes and may be contract and be contracted with 
sue and be sued. In short, the 50 states are separate from the jurisdictional lands of the District of Columbia. This district is a corporation called the United States of America. Contrary to what you were taught in school, the United States is not a country. It is a corporation like IBM, General Motors, or Microsoft. This corporation has legal jurisdiction to do business and create franchises. Consider the other 50 states as franchises for the parent company of the United States of America. This is why we have a president and not a king or queen. Only kings or queens can rule countries. Legally, a president cannot rule over a country but can make decisions on behalf of the king or queen. In the case of the United States, that is exactly what our president does. Um, first of all, we need to know and understand that he's not the president of America, so to speak. I think he's just the president of the corporation. You understand what I'm saying? So this whole president of the United States of America, no such thing. He's the president of a corporation. And in any corporation, AT&T, IBM, McDonald's, whatever, Countries don't have presidents. Corporations do. Whenever the president is being introduced, he or she may be referred to as the President of the United States. The United States of America is no different than General Motors of Detroit or Sears and Roebuck of Chicago. These descriptions are referring to companies which reside in a specific jurisdictional area. In Volume 20, Corpus Juris Secundum, 1785, it states, the United States government is a foreign corporation with respect to a state. Each of the 50 states is foreign to the other. This is why you can gamble in Las Vegas, Nevada, but not in Utah. This is also the reason why persons who commit crimes in one state and flee to another are extradited back to the state where the crime was committed. This is done because under law, the state where the crime was committed is the only state that has jurisdictional authority. Under business law, every corporation must have a president, a secretary of treasury, and so on. Our president is the president of the United States of America. He is not the president of America. This concept can be somewhat confusing, especially since America and the United States is constantly being sold to the public as existing in the same jurisdictional area on the map. The only connection the 50 states have to the United States Corporation is again either by contract and or franchise agreement. A part of this franchise agreement is designated by the status of individuals who call themselves citizens. This contract between the United States of America and the 50 separate states is called an Adhesion Citizens Contract. This Adhesion Citizens Contract is known as the 14th Amendment, which was ratified on July 28, 1868. The second part of the franchise definition mentions that it allows an individual or group to carry out specific commercial activities. These activities fall into a category called interstate commerce. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution is known as the Commerce Clause. It states that Congress has the power to regulate commerce with foreign nations among the states and with the Indian tribes of the time. This power fell under a regulatory body called the Interstate Commerce Commission or ICC in 1887. Each time you sign your name or pledge an oath you are changing your status. You may be asking, what about American citizenship? In law, when you see the words American citizen, this denotes that you are a United States citizen contracted into with the birth certificate, social security number, or through your state franchise agreement, which is the adhesion contract of the 14th Amendment. It is critical that you understand that you are not and cannot be an American. An American is a free person who has not made a contractual agreement
with the United States Corporation. Remember, you are not an American. You are legally a citizen living in a foreign state. This authorization granted by the corporation called the United States of America can be tied into three main areas of contract, three of which we have mentioned. We looked at the 14th Amendment and we realized that this amendment was really a contract. It was an adhesion contract between the United States government and the citizenry of this country. What that meant for African Americans was this. It meant that the old days of slave ownership where a white male owns a slave on a plantation was done away with. And what the owners who owned those slaves did was transfer their property, which were the slaves, from the slave owner to the United States government under the 14th Amendment. And if you recall when you study history, you'll know that many of the southern states and those slave owners were compensated for transferring their property over to the United States government. So what that means for black folks is this, is that you are not free, you are what is called emancipated. And an emancipation is not freedom. Emancipation is the transfer of property from one owner to another owner. This process has nothing to do with sovereignty. A citizen of the United States Corporation or American cannot be sovereign because they do not own the land or have clear title to land. Further, these persons have not established a military to take the land or to create their own land within the continental United States. I'm convinced it's much more serious than that. It's more than a loose-knit network. It is a conspiracy. In 1784, a copy of this document was sent to the Illuminous Weissop and delegated to foment the French Revolution. I mean the Illuminati was responsible for the French Revolution? Yes, absolutely. The courier was struck dead by lightning as he rode through Radisson. Radisbon on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. What about a little divine intervention there, huh? The police found the subversive documents on his body and turned them over to the proper government authorities. After careful study of the plot, the Bavarian government ordered the police to raid Weissop's newly organized lodges of the Grand Orient and the homes of some of the most influential associates, including the castle of Baron Bassen Sonderdorf. Additional evidence was thus obtained convinced the authorities the documents were a genuine copy of a conspiracy by which the synagogue of Satan had controlled the Illuminati at the top, planned to use wars and revolutions to bring about the establishment of one kind or another of a one world government, the powers of which they intended to usurp as soon as it was established. In 1785, the Bavarian government outlawed the, the Illuminati and closed the lodges of the Grand Orient. In 1786, they published the details of the conspiracy. Start up here. In 1784, an act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which proved the existence of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy. This explains the previous nine pages, goes into it in detail. We don't have time to do it completely. Conspiracy. Uh, Adam Weishaupt, a Jesuit plain professor of canon law, defected from Christianity and embraced the Luciferian ideology while teaching at Ingolstadt University. In 1770, the money uh, lenders who had recently organized the House of Rothschild retained him to revise and modernize the old, age-old protocols designed to give the synagogue of Satan ultimate world domination so they can impose the Luciferian ide ideology upon the re what remains of the human race after the final social catechism by use of sat satanic despotism. Weinshoff completed his task on May the 1st, 1776. It's a communist holiday, isn't it? May 1, 1776. The plan required the destruction of all existing governments and religions. In 1776, Weishaupt organized the Illuminati to put the plot into execution. The word Illuminati is derived from Lucifer and means holders of the light.
Weissop's revised plan required his Illuminati to do the following things to help them accomplish their purpose. One, use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of people already occupying positions in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of human endeavor. Once an influential person had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati, they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail and threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and physical harm, and even death to themselves and their loved ones. Number 12, told those present that they must use their wealth to have candidates chosen in public office who would be obedient to their demands and would be used as pawns in the game by the men behind the scenes. The advisors will have been bred, reared, and trained from childhood to rule the affairs of the world. Number 13, control the press. Number 16, infiltrate into the secret Freemasonry to be used for their purposes. That's been documented many times. Number 17, expound the value of systematic deception, use high-sounding slogans and phrases, and advocate lavish promises to the masses, even though they cannot be kept. I will not forget the wound to our country and those who inflicted it. I will not yield. I will not rest. I will not relent in waging this struggle for freedom and security for the American people. So I, I don't know where he is, nor do I, you know, I, I just don't spend that much time on it. We will not tire, we will not falter, and we will not fail. Uh, terror is bigger than one person. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to see soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan and Pakistan and all these places. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. Who knows if he's hiding in some cave or not. Uh, we hadn't heard from him in a long time. Operation Northwoods, the plan called for innocent people to be shot on American streets. This is the Pentagon for boats carrying refugees fleeing Cuba to be sunk on the high seas, for a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington, D.C., Miami, and elsewhere. People would be framed for bombings they did not commit. Planes would be hijacked using phony evidence, all of which would be blamed on Castro to justify an invasion of Cuba 40 years ago. An aircraft at Elgin um, Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA propriety organization in the Miami area. At a designate time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with selected passengers all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be converted into a drone, remote controlled plane, their word for it. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft would be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. Now he's been tested unlike any other president. This 9-11. We have in this past year made great progress in ending the long era of conflict and Cold War. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be,